Hey everyone, I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome to Abby's Kitchen. Today's video has been sponsored by Ritual. Instead of reviewing a traditional What I Eat in a Day video, today I'm going to be discussing a video that's been heavily requested, Elise Parker's Carnivore Diet 30 Day Challenge. Now before we get into any of the gaping dietary gaps one might run into in a diet like this, I want to speak to my general healthy audience for a second because a lot of you have asked me about supplements. I have always been super clear that I'm a food first dietitian, meaning that we should all aim to get as much as we possibly can from a whole foods and a balanced diet. But for a lot of us, especially if there's some dietary restrictions, a well-planned supplement regime can really help fill the occasional gaps. I recently discovered Ritual Vitamins, which is a vitamin subscription service that delivers supplements right to your door, and it's only about a dollar a day. Now, I know that the supplement world is really overwhelming, but I like Ritual because they have a really solid combination of nine vitamins, from vegan vitamin D3 to omega-3s, all to support health. And they've got no colorants, additives, or unlisted ingredients. And if you find that a multivitamin can sometimes make you a little bit nauseous, these ones have a no nausea capsule design, so you don't have to take them with food. So you can check out the link in the description to get 10% off your first three months on Ritual. Now if you want a little recap, because trust me, a lot has happened in a short amount of time, Elise Parker used to have the channel Raw Alignment where she shared raw vegan diet tips and recipes. However, about a year ago, Elise was one of the many vegans to go unvegan and make a lot of waves doing so. I have a whole video about going unvegan if you want to hear my thoughts on the trend right here. Anyway, this was obviously a controversial move and since then hasn't gotten a lot of love from the online vegan community. Having said that, Elise has stated that quitting raw veganism has helped her feel a lot better. And in August of 2019, she rebranded her channel as simply Elise Parker. Her diet after quitting her raw vegan diet consisted of a balanced diet, rich in fruits and vegetables, grains, dairy, meat, and alternatives. In December, however, Elise took to YouTube to talk about a diet challenge she was giving herself to strictly follow a carnivore diet for 30 days. Now, you guys all know I'm not a huge fan of this. In fact, I did a whole video on the carnivore diet and our friend Godi right here. But basically, as it sounds, the carnivore diet is a really super extreme version of the keto diet. It's literally just animal products. No carbs, no grains, no veggies, no fruit, nothing else. I'm just gonna put it out there that a diet that's this restrictive puts a woman at serious risk of malnutrition. Okay, so let's meet Elise and find out what her thoughts are on the carnivore diet. There are actually many reasons why someone would willingly choose to eat this way. It has been shown to help relieve the symptoms from many illnesses such as autoimmunity, fatigue, obesity, inflammatory diseases, and more. There are a few theories on how eating only animal foods can be surprisingly helpful for one's health. Essentially, the carnivore diet is a form of an elimination diet, which means that it removes all common food sensitivities from the picture. There's also the factor of cutting out all carbs, meaning that your body drops into ketosis, which has been linked to benefits like enhanced mental clarity, rapid weight loss, and better digestion. You may be wondering, but what about the body's nutritional needs? Won't you lack some of the necessary vitamins and minerals that a more balanced diet can provide? Well, actually, most of the advocates for the carnivore diet claim that meat contains all of the vitamins and minerals that your body needs to not only survive, but to thrive. So Elise is speaking to some of the alleged benefits of the carnivore diet, like relieving fatigue, obesity, inflammatory disorders. She also talks about how the carnivore diet puts you in ketosis and is a form of an elimination diet because it removes all common food sensitivity. Um, interesting perspective. Okay, so the proponents of the carnivore diet often describe this as a type of elimination diet. And in my experience as a dietitian, I can tell you that a safe and beneficial elimination diet should look nothing like this. Now, traditionally, an elimination diet is used to identify food sensitivities and develop an individualized nutrition plan to help reduce or even eliminate symptoms. Usually, it involves eliminating a small component of the diet like gluten or lactose or FODMAPs and then introducing elements back in in various proportions so that you can gauge the response. You would never eliminate a bunch of major food groups in their entirety as the carnivore diet would suggest. You definitely wouldn't aim to eliminate them for good. In fact, the traditional focus of an elimination diet is often on the reintroduction 
production of these foods so that a professional can carefully isolate the unique problematic food. With this carnivore diet, many are proposing that the elimination of all foods except for animal products will make you feel great and you won't need to reintroduce those other foods. That's not an elimination diet, that's potentially malnutrition. Now, Elise also talks about how meat supposedly contains all the vitamins and minerals that your bodies need to not only survive, but to thrive. I want to flag this point because this is not necessarily true. Yes, you can get a variety of vitamins and minerals from meat. However, there is one that is particularly important that you might be missing out on in significant amounts, and that is vitamin C. Now, if you remember from your high school science class, sailors used to get scurvy, aka vitamin C deficiency, because their diet was mostly made up of fish and meat. They weren't eating any fruit or veg. Vitamin C is a powerful antioxidant required for growth and tissue repair. It's an essential vitamin because our body can't make it, so it has to come from our food or supplements. You may find small amounts of vitamin C in raw liver and eggs, However, it's not typically found in cooked animal foods. Water-soluble vitamins like vitamin C are susceptible to being lost during cooking, like leaching out into the cooking water. So to prevent a huge loss of vitamins when cooking vegetables, you'd want to roast or broil them instead of boiling. And let's not forget about fiber. Meat doesn't give us any fiber, and that's a shame because fiber can do a lot for our health. Not only has fiber been linked to improving cardiovascular health by lowering blood pressure and cholesterol, fiber also promotes a diverse gut microbiome, which improves our immune system, digestion, satiety, and regularity. Now, I know Elise will go on to say that her digestion has been unaffected, but it can take a long time for the gut microbiome to completely change. So I would expect things wouldn't be moving so well down the line. Now, many proponents of a carnivore diet will cite cultures that have historically eaten just meat and were not deficient in any vitamins and minerals like the Inuit, for example. However, you won't find certain meats eaten by the Inuit like whale fat, for example, in your standard butcher box or local butchery. They've also been able to avoid vitamin deficiencies like scurvy because they typically consume whale skin, which is rich in collagen and vitamin C. And these specialty meats may be particularly hard to find depending on where you live. Let's see what else she has to say. The more I experience, the more I can relate to people in all facets of life. And coming from a history of being vegan for almost five years, I know very well what it's like to lose myself in the identity of a diet culture and to lose true open-mindedness. After a very humbling experience of losing my health, my current intention is to really understand rather than judge. And what better way to really understand other than diving straight into an experience that challenges me to get the heck outside of my comfort zone and to release any pre-existing beliefs. I completely admire Elise for talking openly about her dietary journey and falling victim to diet culture. I know that it hasn't been easy for her and I do agree with her that it's important to get out of your current mindset and open your mind to new ideas beyond your current philosophy. That being said, I don't agree that any of these 30-day extreme diet challenges will help you challenge diet culture at all. This stunt is simply transitioning from one extreme to the next. And while I know Elise isn't planning on sticking to this carnivore diet forever, I don't believe that diet should ever be approached with so much haste and restriction. A diet instead should be completely tailored to you based on what you're craving and what your body needs, not sensationalized antics to make a point. And when I say diet, I do mean it in the original sense of the word, like the kinds of food that a person habitually eats. It's not intended for weight loss. It's intended to be something that shouldn't feel like it's a challenge to uphold. Now, while toxic diet culture, of course, exists in the plant-based world, it also exists in the carnivore world. I mean, even though I thought I would like to forget, I think we can all remember this guy. But heck, diet culture is alive and well no matter what your dietary convictions. Changing your dietary patterns, unfortunately, doesn't excuse you from this. So let's see a little bit more about what Elise is eating. Fish and eggs that I needed to get me through at least the first week of this challenge, ensuring that it was all grass-fed, pasture-raised, and organic. I also wanted to set very clear guidelines for myself on what food and drinks are allowed and not allowed. So I decided to let myself keep two comforts throughout this challenge for the next 30 days. 
bulletproof coffee and matcha because hey, I'm human and honestly having a warm caffeinated drink to look forward to every single morning helps make this challenge so much easier to navigate. So it's nice to see that Elise has the option to purchase grass-fed, pasture-raised organic beef, but I can see this diet seriously racking up the bills very quickly. Also on the coffee, I mean, I'm totally in agreement with her on this. I would never be able to give up coffee or my special kind of drink for 30 days. So I'm kind of happy to see that Elise isn't being so hard on herself to have to, to forego that as well. I don't know. I haven't really had like absolutely amazing digestion so far. And I want to make some changes to see if maybe we can enhance that. So yeah, I've been grazing throughout the day, which basically means like snacking, having smaller things, like I'll have some eggs, I'll have some bacon, I'll have like a little bit of steak, I'll have some smoked salmon, um, but I haven't been having like set meals. And I'm gonna change that. I'm gonna start having two meals a day. So the first meal will be like a few hours after I wake up, I'll have bulletproof coffee right when I wake up and then wait a few hours, have my first meal and not really snack in between meals. That way my digest digestive system gets like more of a break. Um, and we're gonna see what that does because in the past, um, whenever I do that, my digestion is really good, especially eating mostly meat. So. Okay, so that was a little shaky, but let's talk about it. So basically, Elise talks about how in the first few days that her digestion hasn't been the best, and it's likely because she's gone from eating a diet rich in fruits and vegetables and fiber to only eating dairy products and meat. Now, studies have shown that a diet low in fiber, like the carnivore diet, of course could increase your risk of constipation. At the same time, proponents of the carnivore diet often cite this one 2012 study that found that reducing fiber intake actually reduced constipation and improved digestion. However, these results were only found in people who are suffering from chronic constipation. So it's unclear whether a healthy individual following a low fiber diet would experience those same effects, especially because it goes against every other dietary recommendation we ever give about digestion. Meanwhile, several other studies have found that fiber helps improve regularity by increasing fecal bulk and increasing stool frequency. Hence the recommendation of getting 25 to 38 grams of fiber per day. As with the claim that intermittent fasting or having two meals instead of lots of mini meals improves digestion, there are a few studies that have found that intermittent fasting may help with IBS symptoms. I mean, one study did find that fasting groups um, had significant improvements with seven out of the eight IBS symptoms compared to the regular diet groups uh, who reported improvements in three out of the eight IBS symptoms. But this was a small study and is the only IBS fasting study that I could honestly find. Since IBS symptoms are a response to eating, some anecdotal evidence found that it may be helpful in managing symptoms for some people, but Aside from anecdotal evidence, there aren't any really good real studies exploring the role of intermittent fasting on digestion in healthy individuals. So instead of grazing throughout the day, Elise may benefit from more structured meals, but also, you know, snacks in between so that she can feel fuller without the need to graze. Of course, eating two meals a day may work for some people, but in general, Eating every three to four hours can help you feel satisfied until you can get to that next meal and also help with maintaining, you know, equal and consistent blood sugar levels. When I first transitioned from the vegan diet back to eating meat, I made a point to learn about the importance of meat quality and how much of an impact it can make both on our health and the environment. At this point, I believe that most people are aware of factory farming, but for those who are unfamiliar, factory farming is an industrial system of farming mass quantities of livestock in a very confined and often unsanitary factories. It's definitely in your best interest to source 100% grass-fed and grass-finished beef. I've teamed up with ButcherBox to shed some light on how to source high-quality meat and opt out of factory farming entirely. Okay, so Elise goes on about the differences between factory farmed meat and grass-fed meat and talks about how she's a big supporter of grass-fed meat and then also talks about her partnership with ButcherBox. Now, I agree with Elise here that it's important to be aware not only of the environmental impact of eating meat, but also an animal's welfare. Now, while the research is still unclear on the safety of an all-meat diet, one thing that I think is quite apparent, especially from what I'm hearing here, is that a carnivore diet 
diet is really freaking expensive. Yes, you may not be spending money on other foods, just meat, but if you also want to eat your meat that is ethically sourced and comes from local farmers and is grass-fed, know that this costs a premium and for most people is just not doable. We did the math for you and were shocked to find out how much butcher box may cost if you're following a carnivore diet. So in a day, most people would have to eat around three pounds of meat to meet the average 2,000 calories in a day. That means you'll need to eat 21 pounds of meat per week and 84 pounds of meat per month. So ButcherBox offers a monthly big box size that contains 16 to 22 pounds of meat and the price is $238. But the monthly size will only last you a week. So to meet your 84 pounds of meat per month needs, you'll have to buy four boxes, which will cost you $952 per month. That is definitely not cheap. It is day 23 and I am popping in for an update to share with you that ever since, I forget what day it was, but ever since I decided to start like more so intermittent fasting and having two meals a day instead of just grazing and like eating whenever, my digestion has been on point, like legit abs, abs. <laughs> Another update for you is like, even though my digestion is amazing and I'm feeling super like mentally clear right now, I am a little bit missing the freedom of being able to eat anything that I want. Like, uh, I don't know. Most days I'm fine with it, but some days, especially in social settings, I think I mentioned earlier, like on day one or something, that that was going to be the hardest part for me. And it definitely is. Um, whenever I'm out and about, I just want to just get whatever I want to get. Um, normally, like, it's going to be mostly animal-based anyway, but being able to get, like, a bun for a burger and not just have, like, a burger patty would be amazing. So I'm really glad that Elise is mentioning that she misses her food freedom and finds it difficult to navigate her diet in social settings. This is a really common concern with really any kind of restrictive diet because food is inherently so social. And while we now have a lot more plant-based options in restaurants, you would have to put together a really unique set of requests to try to eat carnivore while out. Not that you would likely go out very often considering the markup on restaurant steaks is legitimately insane. Okay, so let's finish off by hearing about Elise's conclusions of her 30-day challenge. The main physical changes I noticed were definitely fat loss and increased power in the gym. I did end up losing around two pounds in the full 30 days, and my physique changed slightly, but nothing too crazy. I mostly just felt more lean and more comfortable in my body, so that was definitely a plus for me. And the main mental change I experienced was having way more stable energy and focus throughout the day, like literally every day. And before starting this challenge, I was eating a pretty balanced diet, including meat and plants and things like gluten-free bread and dark chocolate. And I remember feeling my energy fluctuate during that time. And I would like randomly crash after meals, especially if they were carb heavy. And that didn't happen to me at all in the past 30 days. So when I first started, I was really wanting any form of carbs that I could get my hands on. But after those first few days passed, it was pretty easy for me overall. Sure, eating this way was definitely challenging at times. And I remember that there were definitely some days I was getting bored of eating meat, but I never felt like insanely restricted to the point of discomfort. And whenever I did have the desire to eat something that wasn't carnivore, the feelings passed pretty quickly. And something I did to make it easier on myself was just expanding the variety by including things like sashimi, oysters, and crab so I wasn't eating just steak and eggs every day. And I know you're all probably wondering what the heck happened to my digestion from just eating carnivore for 30 days straight. Can I use your bathroom? And this may sound surprising, but my digestion was honestly totally fine. In fact, it was way better than when I was vegan. Also, the more beef jerky and dehydrated meat that I ate, the slower my digestion too. But that, that one's kind of a no-brainer. And most mornings I would wake up with a flat and empty stomach, which wasn't as common on my diet before I dove into this challenge. 
Okay, so Elise goes over some of her kind of concluding thoughts. She talks about how she lost fat and increased power in the gym. She lost two pounds in a month. She felt more lean and comfortable in her body, had better concentration. Um, her cravings went away, her digestion improved, and she woke up with a flat stomach, which all these YouTubers seem to aspire to. Okay, so let's unpack some of these outcomes. First of all, let's talk about the weight loss on a carnivore diet. As with any restrictive diet, since you're only eating meat, you'll likely take in less calories over time and eventually lose weight. Like Elise mentions, she had cravings for nutrient-rich foods like veggies and carbs, but she had to suppress those cravings. Meanwhile, she had to like force feed herself eggs and meat even on days she really didn't feel up to it, which usually results in just consuming less food in the day. Also, protein and fat are satiating macronutrients meaning it typically makes you feel fuller longer than carbs, which may provide a quick burst of energy. No surprise here, but studies have found that while a lot of people will lose a few pounds on a new diet, soon after, the vast majority of people put that weight back on. I don't understand the point in losing a few pounds in 30 days when you're just gonna put that weight back on. Now, let's talk about the mental clarity on the carnivore diet. Because of the role of a ketogenic diet on managing the symptoms of some neurological disorders and epilepsy therapy, many have claimed that a high protein, low carb diet provides mental clarity and increased concentration. In a 2010 animal study, the ketogenic diet improved the cognitive performance of aged rats. However, motor performance remained unchanged. So while the early research is promising, and you'll find plenty of people's testimonials of this, there doesn't seem to be enough high quality evidence or any long-term studies to confidently assure us that the carnivore diet would improve cognition. Next, let's talk about digestion on the carnivore diet. Like we've discussed, a carnivore diet is missing fiber, which can play an important role in our digestion. From populating our gut with health promoting bacteria to improving regularity, most people will say that a high protein, low fiber diet would worsen someone's digestion, not improve it. However, some research suggests that a keto diet may improve digestive issues for people suffering from inflammatory bowel disease or IBD. So one study found that people with IBS who were put on the keto diet for 12 weeks experienced a remission from their IBS symptoms, as well as changes in their gut bacteria. It's important to note that these effects may be explained by the fact that a carnivore diet or a keto diet are just naturally low in FODMAPs. These are fermentable fibers in carbohydrates that may trigger gas and bloating in individuals with IBD and IBS. So fewer carbs in your diet means less fermentable fiber, which means less gas and bloating. Unfortunately, this study doesn't give us any indication of the effects of a zero carb diet in general healthy individuals. Now, while Elise does mention that her digestion improves as the days went on, we still don't know the effects of a carnivore diet on the gut over time. So over time, eating fewer carbohydrates and vegetables and only protein will naturally change the composition of your gut bacteria. While Elise may be experiencing fewer symptoms at the 30 day mark as the body adjusts to the new diet, in the long run, I would be concerned about the reduction in bacterial species in the gut, which could lead to a whole host of other problems. That could be problematic because more and more studies are realizing the importance of our gut health and the impact that it has on our health as a whole. From improving mental health to preventing chronic disease, we're really just scratching the surface, understanding all of the roles that it plays. Okay, so why do I think that Elise has decided to take her diet to the extreme? Well, there may be a few notable things going on. One is an effort to stay relevant on YouTube. Now, I don't wanna be a cynic, but a few reasons why YouTubers or influencers take on new diets and trends is not so much for health reasons, but to get views and stay relevant online. Obviously, a 30-day carnivore diet video title is way more sensational than promoting a balanced, healthy diet. Just saying. Another potential reason is her butcher box partnership. I like to believe that all influencers aim to partner with brands that currently fit their diet, not build a diet that fits another brand, but this shift seems so extreme. Now, I have no qualms about sponsored content. I mean, 
this video is sponsored, but at least disclose the partnership at the start of the video to set the stage for the content to come and maybe do this first challenge video without a sponsor first. And if you like it and enjoy it, then work with meat-based brands. That would just make a lot more sense to me. And third, she seems to be really disjointed in her relationship with her body and food. Now, I know that Elise didn't go from a plant-based diet to a full-on carnivore diet, but this challenge is in itself really worrisome. Elise has said that in the past that a raw vegan diet put too many restrictions on her and her health was at risk. She then started to slowly introduce animal foods into her diet and felt 300 times better. Like with anything, I think with your diet, balance really is key. And I don't see the fascination with some influencers to go from one extreme to the next. I know that eating a variety of foods in moderation isn't a sensationalized video title, but for someone who's mentioned that a balanced meal with plants and animal products is working for her, I don't see the need to fix what isn't broken. It seems to me like she's so out of touch with her body and food that she can easily detach herself from her needs and try whatever is trending. I also don't see the need to test out these diets, especially when the evidence to support them is so limited. Next time, if a diet intrigues you, do your research or talk to a dietitian who can weigh the pros and cons of these types of diets. We do our homework. That being said, if it's currently working for her, then great. I'm very interested to see what's next. So guys, that is it for today. Again, I wanna give a big thank you to Ritual for sponsoring this video. And don't forget about the 10% discount code that is in the description below. If you liked it, be sure to give it the thumbs up. Leave me a comment below about whose diet you'd like to see me review next. Subscribe to the channel, and I will see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye.